Visiting Kids um, is a band um, that I started with um, three little girls, Scarlett, Autumn, myself, and one who's missing. And we have four ba band members. <coughs> Mona Lee is our keyboard player. And uh, we um, have played as large as the Pacific Amphitheater in front of 3,000 people and or for the opening <coughs> of a kid's store. Um, we've uh, late show. <laughs> yeah, we've been on the Late Show, and uh, we've done our own video. We're now on a compilation of uh, 18 women artists from uh, Los Angeles, and uh, we're going to be coming out with a record that'll be in France. Mark has produced our music, Mark Mother's Ball, and uh, that's on um, the Visiting Kids. Do it again. Do a shorter version. Uh huh. Buffalo. Oh. Mm -hmm. You went the whole thing again short? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Visiting Kids is a band that I started that is the three little girls. Uh, Autumn, Scarlett, and Alex, who's missing, and myself, and we're backed by four musicians. Here's Mona Lea, our keyboard player, and Mark Marthas, Bob Devo, who produces our music. Is that enough? <laughs> what would you like to know? <laughs> well, I mean, you play rock music. Yeah, sort of tot rock. Tot rock. Tot rock. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been together for six years. And, uh, you know, we have songs like Who Stole My Barbie Doll Away From Me or Good Clean Fun or Microwave Baby. Do you think it's fun to play? Yeah. 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 Play loud? You know, they're always telling us to turn down, right? Yeah, yeah we, I mean, I, I try to ask the band to turn down. It's hard. They don't always listen. <laughs> Tell us about Saturday night. Mm. Well, when we were doing rehearsal, like um, they, we were um, we were rehearsing, and like the band was playing and playing real loud, and Nancy told him to turn it down. My ears started ringing. And Saturday night, um, when we were playing, my ears also was hurting too. Do you have a ear in your ears? Oh, you should. Yeah, now, and that, since I've talked to Kathy, I um, bought some earplugs and have some, so now I just have to get in the habit of bringing them all the time for them. Yeah, you should. You worry about their ears when they're playing, like the gigs? Yeah, everybody's. I worry about everyone's. I think that the sound is loud for uh, for anyone. I mean, when I 
Scarlett and I went to see Prince together, and we got, she felt actually physically ill from the sound being, we were very close, we were in the third row from the sound being so loud, and afterwards my ears were ringing for so long, uh, and, you know, I worry about everyone's ears in rock, because it just seems like mm -hmm. that it's pushing the limits that we can have. Yeah. I've been wearing ear filters for 10 years, so I don't have ringing ears. <laughs> I have a roll bottle. Well, I first started playing uh, in a rock and roll band, playing music with rock and roll bands in oh, a long time ago, like 66, 65. And uh, I remember we thought it was really cool <coughs> to be really, really loud, as loud as you could possibly be. And to uh, we'd put our heads right up against our amps when we played too. We thought that was really cool. And then our ears would ring <laughs> that night, and we'd go to bed with ringing ears. And we knew it was because of the music. And uh, at the time, I didn't worry about it and didn't think about it. And now, you know, it's now I Devo. When we go on tour, I'll, I'll be on stage, and uh, you know, monitors are cranked up. And after the show, you know, your ears ring all the time, and and it's. Uh, it's something that, you know, I wish I was warned about when I was younger, you know, because now it's, uh, it's something that I'm always nervous about. It goes away after <laughs> I don't play for a, a while, but, you know, I hear stories about people that their ears ring constantly, you know, and that's kind of a scary thought, you know, it makes you wonder if you even want to play on, you know, in a live music situation or, or play somewhere where it's really noisy, you know, if you think that, you know, that it could be a permanent damage. I mean, there is no warnings um, on any kind of situation of uh, buying a stereo or going to a concert of where it would, to, <coughs> would be losing your hearing or the possibility. I mean, you have warnings of, at least when people buy cigarettes, they know that they have the possibility. And I just think that there isn't a great awareness towards that yet, that people, you know, are so used to hearing loud music and they don't realize that they possibly could lose their hearing. Think there should be warning? Yes. Uh, well, what should they say? Um, at such and such, you know, at certain frequencies, it's ha at a certain point, whatever point that is, you have the possibility of, um, you know, going deaf, lose, losing hearing. They should, they should sell earplugs the way they sell condoms in the bathroom, you know, 50 cents a shot, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> at rock and roll shows. <laughs> they, should, they should sell earplugs the way they sell condoms in the, in the bathrooms, um, 50 cents a shot or whatever it might Tampax. be. Tampax. Yeah, Tampax. <laughs> and ear, have ear filters there as well, ear, ear plugs, I should say as well um, for people who go to rock and roll shows. They should have that in the, in the uh, rock and roll venues. That'd be great. You know, or I even think it should be the responsibility of the bands if they really are at a frequency <coughs> that is harmful to people that they should just <coughs> give them out to those that want them. I mean, so that there is an awareness that... Because you see people putting napkins in their ears all the time. It's yeah, I, um, uh, I had two four-year-olds <coughs> at the Devo um, <coughs> sound check over for Christmas Eve two of our nieces and it was so loud and I realized that they were four years old so I went in the bathroom and got toilet paper and stuffed them in their ears and you know just a lot of people don't even realize you know that there is a problem and you know it, it's like the same with um, you know cigarettes or other things it's like once people know that they, they could hurt themselves mm. you know then then, you know, then they have a chance to make a decision on it. But like myself, like I'm saying, you know, it's like it wasn't really widely, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, known information. And, you know, I know a lot of people that, that have hearing problems, you know, because of, uh, you know, the way they uh, experienced music through the 70s or the 80s. You know, and just hopefully, you know, people will get it, you know, with, with things like what you're doing here. You know, people just may 
uh, get enough information and become concerned enough that they might do themselves a favor. How certain governments are talking about putting limits on, on the town levels of our country? What do you think of that? Well, I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's easy to empathize with both sides though, because I, you know, I mean, I understand that, um, you know, even as a, as a guitar player, you know, you understand that there's certain things you can do with a guitar at, at a loud level that you can at a lower level, but, you know, there's, there has to be some way to deal with it. It's, you know, you can't just say, well, you know, people are going to get cancer from cigarettes, so, you know, the, you know, it's like too bad. You know, you have, there has to be some, some way to deal with it, either with earplugs, which is a pretty, sounds like a pretty good thing anyhow. You know, it seems like that would, I mean, obviously Mona Lea makes a difference with her, and, you know, it seems like that would help. Um, there's, I mean, you know, at a certain point, there, there you know, there should be uh, limits on, on sound mm -hmm. level, because, you know, there You've you've been to enough shows. I've been to enough shows to to know when PA's are just overkill in a certain hall. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what the maximum levels people uh, blast at, but I know even my band plays very loud. Louder than you really need to hear the band. <laughs> Visiting kids plays too loud. Yeah, I mean, I have <laughs> problem where I even ask sound people that's doing our sound in a club to that we do not need to play that loud. It's not part of our image or it's not our need. And then when I talk to people out in the audience, it was just as loud as the band before, even when I request that it, I don't want it that loud. So it's... That's because they're deaf too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's a whole... I mean, I think awareness is one of the biggest things to start entering that into people's minds and then that they have the choice. Because, I mean, if they're not aware, then they don't, you know, they just blindly keep doing the same thing, but at least that they know that they could be harming themselves and others and then they have to make the choice. You know, it's kind of a shame because also when you're young, you know, people tend to feel they're invulnerable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the way it was with me. I, you know, I, you know, I got a ringing in my ears, but it went away, so, you right. know, it was no big deal. But Yeah, yeah when you're young, you you just don't think anything is ever going to happen to you. I mean, I can remember having aluminum foil to get suntan, you know, and then, <laughs> then, they, then later on in life you find out that you could actually you know, get cancer, cancer of the yeah. skin, you know, but when you're young, you know, I mean, my parents even said that to me, and I'm like, no, I won't. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, uh, it, like Mark said, I mean, he liked the, uh, the ringing, you know, that feeling of the loud music. But I don't think people are, in, are necessarily inherently stupid. I think if they have the right information, you know, people are given the right information and, and given a choice, I think, uh, you know, they, at, least, at least they have the opportunity to take care of themselves. You know, the worst thing would be to find out, you know, the worst thing would be to find out later that, you, that, you know, you've done something that couldn't be reversed. Mm. Yes, after yeah, but a couple of You rooms. can get it if you want in the kitchen, Kathy. If you think it could be... It'd have to be fast, though. Yeah. There's more snow in Chicago. Yeah. You went to Chicago? Yeah. Yeah, it's very cold in Chicago, right? She covers her mouth right into me. <laughs> Mark, you yes. the last thing. Oh, I forget where we were now. We were uh Information is the best policy, you know, just mm -hmm. let people know, you know, what, what can happen. You know, nobody wants to get AIDS and die, you know, the, once they, you know, I think people, when they learn about, you know, uh, you know, the, the dangers of their, <laughs> of the world, you know, they, they tend to, you know, have a, a survival instinct. Mm -hmm. 
Well, once people realize it's permanent, that's that's the thing, because people think that the ringing is just going to go away, and usually it does, but it doesn't always. That's the thing that they should be aware of. Mm -hmm. but, but Kathy. <laughs> Have you? Have no. you wear, worn a Walkman? You do? You wear? Okay. Well, I have never. Hmm. I don't very often. Think they're dangerous? What do you, how does that, how's that in your head, Scarlett? Do you wear them loud? No. Not that loud. Do you think that those are possibly dangerous? Uh, did you ever turn them up loud while you were wearing them? I mean, accidentally? No. No? Oh, then you're lucky. They're very, they, <laughs> they're, they're my, pretty powerful. The visiting yeah. kids are very survival-oriented. They're very conscientious. They're very conscientious about people smoking around them. And, you know, they're very health-oriented, environment-oriented. <coughs> Did you have to have a lot of headphones on in your life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Walkmans are pretty insidious little uh, devices because... They can go loud enough to melt your eardrums, I think. You know, they're a lot of power. In the, you know, you wouldn't think of it either. You look at those tiny little, you know, speakers, tiny little earplugs. How do you think what's hearing is? Well, I, I tend to think that he listens to music when he comes home from the studio extremely loud, louder than, you know, I find enjoyable, you know, <laughs> and when I question him about it, he just thinks that, like, you know, uh, he, I, I think that he's definitely acquired um, a level where he's used to, I mean, he goes to the studio all day long and they listen to the sound extremely loud and then he comes home and again listens to it loud and I, I think over the years it must have affected him in some way. <coughs> I don't know if he agrees with me. <coughs> Well, I know that definitely, you know, on days that I'm in the studio and days I'm not, it makes a difference, you know, on my hearing. Things ever sound different when you're, like, recording one day and you go back the next day and listen to the day? Sure. I mean, you know, that's a pretty common thing, I think. Not even just with us, but, I mean, just about any engineer or producer that's spent much time in the studio can tell you that, you know, you're you're pretty worthless for a mix after you've sat in front of speakers for uh, eight hours or so, eight or nine hours, and, you know, people sometimes to meet deadlines, they'll be working 14 or 16 hour days, and, you know, you come back the next, you know, for us, we just always know that after we've spent a whole day in the studio that we've, you know, that there's no way we can listen objectively to what we're doing anymore. We can't even hear it right, you know, because the speakers have been so loud. You just have to wait till the next morning and listen to it. Yeah, you know, we always end up doing our mixes the morning after we, you know, we get a thing, we get something to where we think we have a final mix, and then the next morning come in and then fix it. <laughs> it always happens like that. It's rebellion. Rebellion is loud. Pardon? Oh, address uh, Buffalo. Oh. Oh. Why do you think rock and roll is so loud? Because it's rebellious, and that's the nature of rebellion, is to be loud and angry in its origin. That's the reason. And plus, it's, I think, an indulgence on the musician's part. <laughs> and you? As the musicians go deaf, <laughs> so go their public. Yeah. Good bass player, though. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy became 40% uh, deaf after the athletic 
Ready? Uh, Everybody quiet, quiet on the set. to remind you to save your ears for rock and roll. Okay. <laughs> no, then wave. <laughs> we're sweet. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. We're not a punk group. <laughs> okay. okay. One, two, three. Hi. We're, we're the visiting, visiting kids for a year. And we'd like to remind you to save your ears for rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> 